Kendall, thank you very much for being a part of the show. And uh, again, Kendall does an incredible job covering college baseball. And with us on this the week before uh, week of that the College World Series will start in Omaha. But we'd like sure. to start with Baylor first. Obviously, uh, looking for a replacement for Steve Rodriguez, who replaced Steve Smith before him. What are you hearing right now that you can share with us on the Baylor search? Because we also know Mac Rhodes has uh, sometimes been able to find somebody that never was even on the radar. Yeah, no doubt. I, I have no doubt they've done a pretty exhaustive search. I mean, some of the names I've heard, obviously, they're looking in the right places, whether it's, you know, Lane Burroughs at Louisiana Tech, certainly a guy that's, you know, in the mix. I think you look at, across the country, you know, Jake Gotra is a guy that I know has had interest in the Baylor job. I'm not so sure. You know, I, I think he's going to stay put at Mississippi State just because I think he has his eye, his eye on an SEC job. But, uh, you know, I think they're looking at the right guys. You know, Dan Fitzgerald at LSU is a guy that stands out right now. The thing about Dan is, you know, he's a Dallas Baptist and was one of the architects of, you know, Dallas Baptist. And it's, it's rise in college baseball over the last couple of decades. You know, he's, he was, you know, Dan Heather's right-hand man. And uh, I think, you know, Fitzgerald will be an excellent hire if, if that's the guy that it would be. Well, obviously, you know, the, the elephant in the room is, you know, Mitch Thompson. You know, he's a guy that, you know, was an excellent recruiter under Steve Smith. It was a huge part of what, you know, Baylor did under Smitty. And, you know, he's a guy that's certainly uh, in the mix as well. And I would keep an eye on a, on a guy like Rob Vaughn in Maryland. I mean, if you look at Rob, you know, he's a Corpus Christi native. Uh, he kind of gnashed his teeth as an assistant at Kansas State. Um, you know, he played college baseball at Kansas State. You look at the job he's done at Maryland. The thing that the thing that I keep going back to when it comes to Maryland, Smokey, is when you look at the hires that Maryland has made as an athletic department over the years in baseball. You know, you look at Eric Backage. You know, they hired him. Well, he ends up being a national runner up at Michigan. Probably going to be the next head guy at Clemson. Uh, you look at John Sheff. They hired him. He went on to Virginia Tech, where he just led the Hokies to a super regional host. And now, you know, now they have Rob Bond. So, I mean. Conventional wisdom, looking at those hires, would suggest, hey, Maryland knows what the heck they're doing. And any anytime you hire one of their baseball coaches, you're probably your hit rate, and that's probably pretty good. So, I mean, those are the names I'm kind of hearing right now. I mean, I would I would probably keep a close eye on the, the Mitch, you know, Fitz, Fitz and uh, Rob Bond names for for now. And, and honestly, if, if BU and Mac Rose decided to go that way. Uh, I feel really good about either one of those hires. I think if you look at Mitch and the job that you know he did as the head coach, it's, it's one thing to recruit really well as an assistant level, but you know he went to McLennan, led him to the national championship. He's been an excellent head coach there. Uh, Dan, you know, is at LSU now. Has had chances to take head coaching jobs in the past, just hasn't done it. Hasn't found the right fit. Obviously, Baylor sounds like it's the right fit for him. Uh, and then you look at Rob Vaughn. I mean, the thing about him that's interesting is, you know, they you know they they had an, just an okay year a couple of years ago but they make that big surge this year. He's just one of those guys that's a very cerebral coach, but yet he's very in tune with kind of the younger player. He's hard-nosed. He knows what it takes to land at a program like Baylor that, frankly, let's be real honest, I mean, that, that program needs a little spice. I mean, they need a little bit of spice to, to catch up with the Texas, the Texas A&M, and the TCUs of the world. Kendall, how much uh, when it comes to uh, equivalency sports – potentially and probably getting full scholarships for what they've been asking for for a long, long time. Changes coaching searches around the country because schools will have the option to not do that. Now, I would assume that most of them, if they want to remain competitive, will. But how does that change things going forward? It's massive. I think if you're a school like Baylor, you have a lot more to sell uh, than you did before. Because, you know, the the fact of the matter is with BU is compared to some other schools uh, around the country and around the region – they didn't quite have the financial aid to help. And it, that's not to say it's, you know, Mac Rhodes' fault. It's not the president's office fault. It's just kind of the reality of the situation. And, you know, with the transformation committee, when they meet in the fall, all indications are that the transforma- transformation committee will make it where conferences are making their own scholarship rules, and they're going to make it to where teams can hire as many assistant coaches as they want. So what happens is these programs that have, you know, an advantage over Baylor from a scholarship standpoint – all of a sudden it doesn't matter anymore because they're all playing by the same rules and the same regulations. So I think for a program like Baylor, it allows you to really sell that program because all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know what, we might not be in the best you know, financial aid position right now, but guess what? In like a, probably two years, it's not going to matter anyway. Kendall, uh, before we move on to the College World Series, uh, you know, one more thing on Baylor. When it came to Steve Rodriguez and his tenure, what did you kind of feel was the – like you've mentioned, they need some juice right now, and they definitely were running out of that there at the end. But what do you think was ultimately the the issues that arose for the eventual departure between Rodriguez and Baylor? It is really weird because I, you know, number one, I thought that was a really good hire when they made it. Obviously, you know, 
you know, Steve got to them some regionals. They were always contenders. But, you know, it's just one of those deals where they never just kind of got over the hump. And the problem you run into, and it's not necessarily Steve's fault or anybody else's, the problem you run into is people, you know, and it's not to say Baylor shouldn't expect more. They absolutely should. But, you know, people start to get a little impatient with, like, this rebuilding process when, you know, TCU's going to Omaha. You know, you've got a and Texas and Omaha this year. Texas Tech, of all places, you know, we all remember when those guys would have, would have like, prayed and had their last right be just to get to Omaha. Uh, Texas Tech gets to Omaha every other year. So it's just, you know, it's one of those deals where, you know, Baylor is no longer a place, or, or frankly, any other job in the state, whether it's U of H or whatever, it's no longer a place where you can just show up and you get, you know, seven years to kind of tournament an Omaha contender. I'm not saying you've got to do it in two or three, but the fact of the matter is when you look at Baylor, that was not a program, especially after this year, losing some guys that you looked at next year and went, you know what, I think they're going to contend for the conference championship. But I think if you're Mac Rhodes, he's probably honest with himself about that and made the decision. All right, Kendall, thanks for all that insight on the Baylor coaching search again. Uh, would not be surprised at the names you brought up. Uh, some of them have been uh, filtered into our Sikkim 365 premium section as well. No doubt. Um, I, I guarantee you Brian's on it. Yeah, <laughs> no, he, he's – in fact, he posted something earlier today. So glad we had you on today as well. What a field in Omaha. 